Welcome to the Triage Method Podcast with me, Gary McGowan, and my co-host, Mr. Patrick Farrell. How are you this week, Patty? I'm positively, indubitably fantastic. Um, I graduated this week, which was Aww. the most anticlimactic thing ever. <laughs> um, and they didn't even send us a link to watch the, uh, the graduation itself. So again, it's, just, it's run like a shit show. It's UCD, if anyone was wondering. Um, Slated. Um, run like a shit show. And then it was just so anticlimactic. It's like your, your name just appears on the screen or a little picture of you and your name and your degree for two seconds. And it's like done. Now, personally, I actually prefer that. I would have liked to have gotten a link to actually watch it before, you know, you know I did actually watch it because you know, someone in the Facebook group had it and they passed it on and whatever, you know? So I did actually get to watch it. But uh, that actually was much more preferable than sitting in a hall for like four hours and just being like, all right, cool, go up, get your degree, walk away. Yeah. Yeah, like, so I'm not, I'm not too unhappy about it. However, it was very anticlimactic because with this whole COVID situation, as I'm sure everyone in the world is aware, um, like we didn't have any like end of year, you know, like we just did our Easter holidays and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, we're closing down the world. And um, so my the entire of my last year was just like all right you don't get to see anyone and then they just scummed us out of the graduation as well <laughs> and they pocketed the difference which is also the biggest scum as well where like you know normally they pay people to do the graduation and you know put the chairs out and do all that stuff they just didn't do any of that stuff so in my mind i'm like they pocketed the difference <laughs> Yep, I'm back to college and as well, and I've been uh, in the college once in the last two weeks for like an hour. So, really getting the most out of my uh, my fees, you know, using the college services. Yeah, it's great, Harry. Did they at least give you like a a laptop loan or anything? Oh yeah, all my internet's covered and everything. Obviously, yeah, yeah. No, it's not, not at all. <laughs> but to be honest, I actually can't complain at all. I actually much prefer the online setup other people don't but suits me fine i can do my work yeah it suits our business model and also this is why we started the coaches corner as a completely unrelated plug but i like the, <laughs> fact that, the fact that you can just watch videos in like double speed and stuff I'm like half the lectures you could watch them in quadruple speed because they talk so slow and it's not hard stuff they're like oh i really need to uh you know to spend ages really trying to interpret the words that they're saying it's like no you're just chatting shit here let's speed this up you know so you can just knock through your lectures in double speed and be like right we're done that's exactly what i do and with that said what are we talking about this week well this week um apart from all the shit talking that we do we are actually going to talk about <laughs> effectively th this concept of missing out on, on your life for fitness right because this is something that uh, we've, we've touched on a few times we've talked about it in various podcasts all over the place and if you read any of our blogs you'll you'll see this you know this theme repeated uh, repeatedly and um, where people effectively have this all or nothing approach with various concepts within health and fitness whether it's nutrition whether it's training whether it's just the actual act of like fitness stuff and um, people have this all or nothing we have to be 100% in or we're 100% out. And people end up not complementing their life with health and fitness stuff. It ends up becoming their life, right? So they miss out on actually living their life. Like, you know, they miss out on holidays. They miss out on social occasions. They miss out on, you know, going out with their family and friends and doing whatever because they're so invested in health and fitness. Now, there obviously is a time and a place for that you know like if you are i don't know training for a bodybuilding competition where your nutrition has to be 100 percent on point your training has to be 100 percent on point you know and especially in the last we'll say 12 weeks 16 weeks running up to a show you know like everything has to be very much on point in that case it's like yeah you, you're probably not going to have a lot of balance within your life right but for the average person who you know just wants to get in a little bit better shape build a little bit of muscle have good function when they're older, you know, wants to be healthier and wants to feel good, wants to eat a nutritious diet that, you know, is calorie appropriate and, you know, gets them where they want to go. Like that's not a great uh, approach to 
living your life, right? So Gary, what are your thoughts on this kind of concept? It is a kind of all or nothing concept, but also the, the concept of health and fitness becoming your life rather than being a complement to your life. Yeah, so so I think there's I think there's there's pros and cons to this, and I think you need to look at it from the perspective of like how you currently approach things and how you used to approach things. Because when I first like got into fitness and training, etc., like I was just I was big into it, and I was definitely this type of person where it was just all or nothing. Let's go for it. Let's skip everything. Um, and and that was that was pretty much religious as it related to nutrition and as it related to training. Um, and as it related to things like not drinking or, you know, even not doing other types of activities. And I would basically just live doing those things. That was it. You know, I, I was in college at the time, um, early on in my earlier years of college, basically my, my whole priority was just training, recovering from training, training again. I didn't necessarily have the best approaches, but that was pretty much all I cared about. So basically I definitely missed out on a lot of things like if friends were going for food somewhere you know pizza or whatever i would rarely ever get involved in that you know or if people were going on nights out i would very rarely go on nights out Uh, and basically i would think about my whole kind of social life from the perspective of just training that was it you know it's like oh no i'm not going to go there because i'm supposed to be training today so i'm going to train or you know i'm not going to go for that that food or whatever because I'm follow, trying to follow this meal plan or whatever it might be. So early on, like I did a lot of that and it would be unfair to say that was wholly negative because it gave me a lot of positive things going forward. So for example, when I was in college, the fact that, you know, I was, I was very, I became just able to do things purely for myself in terms of saying, no, I'm not going out tonight. That doesn't benefit my life. So I'm not going to go out. Okay. And it was just like that, like real harsh, just like, yeah, I'm not going out. There was long periods of time where um, I never, never had a drink or anything like that. And that's a, that's a pretty positive thing in general, depending on the perspective you're looking from. But um, if you're doing it purely from the perspective of like forced restriction and you're genuinely missing out on things that could potentially enhance your life, uh, then I think that can become a little bit more negative. So for example, I went out for dinner with my family last night, had a couple of beers, had a nice meal. <laughs> got locked. Got locked for 105 minutes. Um, but, you know, had a couple of beers, had a meal, lovely, great food, uh, definitely ate too much, have a food hangover. <laughs> um, but those types of things are, I would consider to be life enhancing if you're able to, you know, manage your diet appropriately. So like, I'm not concerned, I'm not waking up this morning and being like, oh no, I went over my calories. Oh no, what am I going to do? It's just like, oh yeah, I'm not that hungry this morning because I ate more. So I won't eat as much this morning. <laughs> like it's not a big deal. Uh, so I can look at those things in that way now and still get the benefits of those events. Whereas in previous years, um, it might've been the case that, you know, if we were, if my family were to say, oh, will you come for dinner with us? That would have been a real stressful thing. You know, I wouldn't have wanted to go, not because it wouldn't be enjoyable in any way, but because I wouldn't allow myself to enjoy it because I would be so focused on whether or not this contributed to body composition outcomes, for example. So if it's going to put me over my calories, that's going to really affect me psychologically. So that's not a, that's not a great place to be, whether it be related to training or whether it be related to nutrition. I think a lot of these discussions end up boiling down to nutrition related factors, just because food is so um, intertwined with our social lives, but it's also very relevant to training because what some people do, some people take this to the extreme and they, for example, if, if someone was saying, Hey, we're going to this water sports park at the weekend. Will you come along? There's people who will say, yeah, I'd like to do that, but I'm not going to do it because I'm training legs on Friday and my legs will be sore or I'm training legs on Monday and I want to be as fresh as possible for that. And like, that's fine. If you're like a highly competitive athlete, you know, um, or you're playing a team sports and a team sport and you want to, you know, stand in solidarity with your teammates and say, look, we're all doing the same thing or you're, or you're being paid for your sport. (laughs) But if you're just going to the gym to try and build a bit of muscle, I think that's, it's a little bit uh, discordant, the amount, of, uh, the amount of effort you're putting into things, the amount that you're sacrificing, and the amount that you're potentially getting out of it. So that's where the drawbacks start to come, in, come into play. Um, so, 
So with that said, basically like what we would generally propose is the idea that training should enhance your life. It should be life enhancing and it should not make your life worse. So if you're thinking at the moment that, you know, right, I'm really enjoying my training. I'm really enjoying having my diet in order. My health is better. I feel good, etc. Like, what are you going to do with that surplus of feeling good, that surplus of health, that surplus? plus of function in terms of your fitness and your, your capacity for activity. Like what are you actually going to go and do with that? Because if you're solely focusing on the body composition outcomes, let's say, then sometimes you can miss the fact that you do feel better. And the fact that, you know, you do have the capacity now to go and do more things. Like if someone wants to go for a hike and they say, will you come along? You're probably going to have a greater capacity for that just by virtue of the fact that you're training every day, you know, not you've never hiked before, but you're training every day. And that can all be enjoyable and it only becomes enjoyable when you expose yourself to it. And effectively, you kind of have to give yourself the permission to enjoy it, you know, Um, because that's what I used to find is that when I did break out of like that real restrictive mindset uh, early on in, in my training life, um, what I would find is that because I, I, I was overall quite restrictive and that this was like oh, the one day where I might go and do something that's not related to training, that, you know, it was constantly, it, it felt like I was cheating on my life in some way that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm breaking out of this, but oh God, I can't wait to get back and I have to go to bed early and I have to train, etc. And look, there's positive things that do come, come from that. The ability to have um, discipline uh, that, and apply it to anything. For example, if, you, if you're in college, doing all that, uh, applying all that discipline all that time and that, that all the time and that restriction as it relates to training, <clears throat> it can also carry over to your studies. So, you know, if you do need to skip out on social events to get your studies done, so you get good grades, et cetera, like that's a positive thing that you've learned but you don't want it to be a restrictive thing that carries forward long-term. But so, so basically positive skills, they can translate to certain areas of your life at certain points in time. But if that's your permanent state of, of living a restrictive lifestyle an ascetic lifestyle that you basically don't need, I think that's, that, that's probably a net negative, I would say. Yeah. And as I've said before, like I'm definitely someone that has a predilection to more, yeah. Uh, regimented and you know order I'm like I I really like things to just effectively be black and white but very much like this is the time we're going to do this like Gary will tell you and I'm like this this is the plan for the day this is what we're going to do this is what we're going to do for the week this is what like have our business plan day for the next fucking two years you know like stuff like that I'm very regimented with that kind of stuff so just keep that in mind when we're discussing this because if I genuinely thought being extraordinarily regimented with your diet and your training was beneficial, like that's my bias going into it. That's what I want to see. But the fact that I'm saying that this is actually not the most effective way to get results and to actually, you know, enjoy the process. Like that should be something that you, you take heed of, right? If you are listening to this and you're like, no, like I'm a very much like that kind of military type, you know, where it's like, oh, we, it's just, this is the order. These are the rules. This is what has to be done. This is, you know, we're going to do it at this time. And this is my daily structure. And, you know, it's very much regimented. Right. And I know people are going to be listening to this and going like, ah, like this, this is not for me. This is just, you know, this is for those weaker people that can't, can't do it properly, you know? And, And that's just not, not the case. Like, going from say for example like i remember at times in my life when i was doing like sports like boxing and you know doing like resistance training and stuff like i'd be training like six days per week often twice per day you know and that's not really sustainable if that's just a a hobby effectively because that's all it was you know and if you're being paid to do that or you think that there is a possibility that you might be paid to do it by all means go for it you know and and for sure, if it definitely gets gives you way more structure in your life and leads to better outcomes in terms of your ability to make money, your ability to interact meaningfully with other humans and whatever else, it's like, cool, do that, you know? Because I can think of situations where, you know, maybe, I don't know, you, I don't know, live on a fucking farm or something and, you know, you have to be very regimented with your day. And also you're like, oh, well, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So the only time I get to interact with other humans is you know, when I'm going out to the gym or when I'm going to, you know, my sport in the evening. I'm like, okay, cool. Like we can definitely make up 
situations. So these are all outlier situations. The vast majority of people work a nine to five, you know? Um, and for them, it's like, okay, like, this, like, do you really think having to go to the gym six days per week is going to really enhance your life? You know, being very regimented, being like, oh, I definitely have to go to the gym six days per week, have to eat this amount of calories, macros, whatever. And um, do you think that's going to be the, the make or break for your life? For sure. That's, I'm not saying that's a negative, you know, but do you think that moving down to say, for example, four days per week of training and then having a little bit uh, less restriction with your diet. And what I mean, less restriction, like obviously you still have goals, but rather than going like, oh, well, no, it's all or nothing in terms of I only eat these types of foods or um, I always go through like periods of like really restrictive calories and you know, trying to really diet down to like obscenely low body fats for no reason other than, you know, oh, I just want to have a goal to do. Do you really think that that's going to enhance your life longer term, right? And also think about, like, I think about this quite often as well in terms of like, what are you actually going to do when you have kids, you know, because the vast majority of people are actually going to have kids, even though I know a lot of people these days are like, oh, I don't want to have kids. Um, but regardless of that, the vast majority of people do have kids. And um, so what are you going to do someday? You're going to be like, oh, sorry, I'm not eating, you know, dinner with my family or oh, I'm not eating uh, lunch with my children on the weekend or breakfast or whatever it is because you know it doesn't really hit my macros like I can't have like a lasagna with my family or a stew with my family because I can't really perfectly calculate the the macros in it so I can make a guesstimate but you know it's not really you know it's not going to fit in with my day you know or your child comes home and they're ecstatic they're like I got onto the fucking football team and I got an A in my test and you're like yeah, I'd love to go out and celebrate with you and get ice cream or whatever. Um, but uh, no, we're not actually going to do it because I'm dieting, you know? Like summer's coming up. Sorry, bro, I want that six pack, you know? Like, is that genuinely in your head? Do you think that is the approach that's going to be the most successful for your life, right? However, keep that thought in your mind, but also remember that you can still have goals. You can still push forward with certain things. But what we're saying is, you want to do it in a, in a manner that is actually conducive to longer term health outcomes, body composition outcomes, and enjoyment outcomes and whatever else. Effectively, the health and fitness stuff is an add on to your life, right? And it's not the totality of your life, you know? Like you'll see people do this all the time where they'll say like, oh, I'm doing my job and all I can think about is the gym after work, you know? And it's like, okay, that's that's a bit weird, you know, like a hundred percent. Like I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that is a bit weird. I'm like, you don't get paid to do this. And a hundred percent, I'm totally for people enjoying the gym. I'm totally for people, you know, having something to look forward to at the end of the day. Like again, maybe that's when they socialize with their, their friends or their family or whatever. You know, I see loads of guys, especially going to the gym with three or four of their mates in the evening. I'm like hundred percent, get out, do some activity. This is great. You know, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. However, it can become like pathological almost where it's like, you are just so focused in on, oh, this is the, the, the entirety of my life. I'm not going to actually engage with my, my friends, my girlfriend or partner or whatever. And because, you know, I actually have the gym to go to, or, you know, someone's like, oh, well, can we do it on this day? And you're like, oh, well, I have a, like Gary said, like I have legs this day. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Like, go for a hike or something you're like nah i might even be just a little bit too fatigued for my legs on monday so like i'll, I'll meet up with you but uh, it has to be very low intensity and you miss out on all of these opportunities because you are trying to be uh, some sort of athlete which you just aren't you know and and again that's that's perfectly okay if they're the trade-offs that you're willing to make however what you'll find the vast majority of people make these trade-offs in their earlier life in terms of their teens their 20s and again like gary stated there are benefits to that. Like it does teach you some valuable life skills, you know? However, what happens then is they're in their late twenties or in their thirties or in their forties. And they're looking back and going, you know, I really wish I did actually go on that holiday with the lads. You know, they did have a great time. And, but I, like I was, I was kind of feeling a little bit fat because I hadn't been dieting. It was a last minute thing. And like, I'm the fit person in my group. So I didn't want people to see me like that. So, you know, and I didn't go, you know, stuff like that happens. And you're like, looking back when you're 30 or 40 or whatever 
that's not going to be something that you look back on fondly, you know? And you're going to look back and go, I actually really missed out there, you know? And, and so you have to balance the uh, life with all your health and fitness goals, you know, like actually living your life. And this is where having that balanced approach where health and fitness stuff complements your life rather than becomes your life is so important, you know? And like, it's an impossible concept to really elaborate on everything and all the nuance on it in like one podcast here. And, um, but hopefully people get that into their head. Like even just the concept of like, okay, health and fitness is supposed to be an add on. It's not supposed to be the, the main course, you know, it's not supposed to be everything for some people. Certainly like if it's their job and it's, you know, their livelihood or whatever it, it can be. Right. But however, even in those people, like, do you really want that to be the case? Do you want to make something that is your hobby that you're passionate about into your career? You know, is that what's going to make you happy? Cause you see this again, even with athletes where it makes, they make their career in like, I don't know, basketball or something. And then when they retire, it's like, they have nothing They're Yeah. They have money or whatever, which, you know, happy days would love that. Um, but they're in a situation where now they're not actually able to do the thing that they were doing their whole life. That was the only thing that brought them joy all other friends they made, which, you know, again, great friendships, whatever, but they're all in basketball, for example. And now they're like, I'm not actually part of that world anymore because I'm retired. I can't play. I'm injured. I'm whatever, you know? And again, that's not a great place to be in long-term where you effectively have alienated yourself from your friend group, your social circles, purely by virtue of getting older, you know? And that's, again, it's not a great place to be in. So you need to have you know, effectively a backup if you are a professional athlete, you know, you have to have other, you know, stuff that you enjoy. And, um, but also it's like, you actually have to build a life and keep in your mind that the health and fitness stuff that you are engaging in is part of your life, but it isn't the entirety of your life. Yeah. And I think another thing related to that as well is um, understanding why you weigh things up the way you do, because like what I, what I would find is that like early on, like, let's say when I was, when I was just like following bodybuilders and that was what I was focused on. Like, it was like, all right, let's build loads of muscle. That's all I want to do. Like the, the people that I would have been following on social media, they were all of a similar mindset. They all valued the same things. They all were into training to build muscle, to look better, etc. And then when I would watch YouTube videos, all my suggestions are tailored towards that stuff as well then. So basically all of the media that I'm consuming because like the vast majority of people mainly consume social media. Um, if that's, if that's all tailored towards the value that you're currently, you know, that you currently value yourself, then that's going to reinforce the behaviors that you're, that you consider to be, you know, worthy of, of value that are valuable. Um, so if you, if you think about that in the context, in the context of training in the context of what Patty's just discussed, it's very easy to see why you would think that this is, all, all there is, or that this is all that could potentially be of, of use to you. But if you were following people who, you know, you'd, there was, there was a diverse way that people live their lives, diverse lifestyles. So for example, you're following some people who uh, they're big into like hiking at the weekends or doing outdoor activities, swimming in lakes, whatever. There's people who go kayaking. There's people who have kids and just, you know, go on day trips with their kids or whatever, that they're doing lots of different things. And you see everyone's enjoying themselves doing those things. And they talk about why they do what they do, um, what they get from it, etc. Then you, you begin to, to demonstrate to yourself that, oh, there, there actually are other ways of living. There are other things that I could potentially sprinkle into my life and make it better. And then you begin to um, diversify your health behaviors, you could say, because the reality is that training and nutrition are one or are two parts of the puzzle. They're really important for health, for sure. But there, there's like the vast majority of people that are into, you know, bodybuilding, let's say they're obviously pushing beyond the point of health. Like it's no longer just health promoting and it's potentially taking away from their health because you, you end up taking from things like social connection, for example, that's really important for health long-term, uh, having good social connections, having social support, et cetera, that's really important. And if you've never built that up, then that's going to come back to bite you at some point in time. And until you're exposed to 
uh, a definitive event uh, which that becomes clear it can be difficult to see so diversifying your social media feed is one way to do that but also if you if you look back to the the coronavirus lockdown let's say a lot of people who had dedicated their whole life to just training like basically for the sake of training or looking better or whatever like they were they were real low about it you know they found it really difficult to cope it was difficult for them to go through every day because the thing that they put their whole meaning and purpose uh, or attached the meaning, their meaning and purpose to, that was gone. They could no longer go to the gym. And while they could do, you know, some home workouts or whatever, the lack of potential for progression there um, meant that that wasn't enjoyable for, for people because it was, it was no longer aligned with what they see as being their purpose in life, which is to build muscle or to look better, whatever it happens to be. So, so I guess asking yourself that question of what are my personal values can actually be quite useful here. Because, you know, if you say, if you're saying to yourself, you know what, I actually do care about having good relationships with friends. I care about having a good relationship uh, with my significant other, I care about, you know, looking after my kids and spending time with my kids, etc. then you can begin to allocate your time, your effort, your cognitive resources appropriately. Because if you if you can do that, honestly, and, and still come out the other end saying, yeah, actually, I should train the way I'm training, then that's fine. That's you. That's you. You've made your decision. It's not my place or Paddy's place to judge that, you know, for example, like someone could Someone could look at my life and even I look at my own life sometimes and I'm think and I think to myself, you know, like what are you doing? Is is this too extreme at times? You know, all you do, all you do, all you care about, all you think about the vast majority of the time is training or studying or working. And if I, I like I say that to my clients because sometimes what, what clients will say to me is they, they'll measure the way I live versus the way they live. And they'll say, you know, sometimes clients can end up hesitant to maybe complain about something because they'll say, they'll, pre- they'll preface it with, oh, but I know, Gary, you're up since probably five in the morning or something, and you've been training and you've been studying or whatever. And the, rea- the reality of the situation is that I've, like, I, I live in the way I live and commit to the things that I commit to because I see them as being valuable. I see them as being meaningful. And I also have dealt with the fact that I accept there's probably going to be trade-offs to other areas of my life, whether it be relationships or health even, for example. Like as much as I care about health, I also appreciate that I'll probably incur a lot of stress in the coming years through studying medicine and going working as a doctor and training and doing triage, et cetera. Like I, I accept that there's probably a trade-off to my health longer term as a result of doing that. There might be benefits to my health as well, but there's probably going to be some trade-offs. I also appreciate that, you know, for example, by training uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as we both do, that there's a risk someday that I, that you could just rupture your ACL and now you need surgery and you can't do any other training. So there's potential, um, to, potential, uh, detractions for, from from your health to the things that you commit to and knowing all of that stuff in advance and uh, how that relates to your values how it relates to the things you're willing to accept as trade-offs that is useful because that means that you're actually li- doing what i call living deliberately that you know you've thought about the way that you live and i think that that, that concept of living deliberately is a real simple way of of encompassing a lot of different things because if you're if you're getting up every morning and you know, you just kind of, you, you go to work and, you know, you fill the time outside your work with like just whatever happens to be there, whether it be social media or some movie or something like that's not necessarily a bad way to live, but if you're just letting things run by passively, then that's not living deliberately at all. Um, and similarly, you know, if you're, if you, if you're just training and you got more into training casually and now it's kind of your social circle and you feel like, oh yeah, well I have to train and eat six meals a day and I have to do that seven days a week. And you're kind of just going through the flow of things all the time. And that's all you do. Again, I wouldn't say that is living deliberately. Like it might give you, it might be the illusion that you are, but you haven't actually sat down and said, what are my values? What actually matters to me? Like what, what, where do I want to be in 10 years? How does this relate to, you know, my ability to be a good parent or, or whatever it happens to be. And that's the stuff that, that, that is really important longer term. And I think if you're, if you want longevity in terms of even, even in terms of training for life, you do have to bring that stuff into your decision-making process, particularly if you want a, a better quality of life. So, so yeah, do it on your own basis um, and don't measure against someone else because I, I think that's a recipe for, for disaster or at least a recipe for ending up on the wrong path. 
Yeah, and as we were saying, like it is, it, like it's a hard first of all conversation to have with yourself because you actually have to like you know sit down and like do some deep introspection and be like, yep. okay, well, what's like, what are my values? What do I actually want to achieve in life? Because you see this all the time, and like especially in our field, we'll say personal training, right, or coaching, or whatever fuck you want to call it, right? And people will do this all the time where they don't actually think what's going to happen in the next two, three, four, five years, you know? And they don't plan ahead for any of that stuff because they've never actually, you know, taken the time to be like, what do I actually enjoy? Like people just fall into the, the personal training sphere because they're, you know, they like training, they enjoy helping each other. Cause like everyone enjoys helping other people. Well, the vast majority of people enjoy helping other people, you know, if they're like, Oh, I can spread my knowledge. I can, you know, we'll say impress people. I can get them results. I can, you know, help people. Like people enjoy that stuff. Right. So people can easily fall into the personal training realm and then two or three or four years down the line, they're like, what am I actually doing? Like I'm, yeah. I'm in the same position and um, I do my coaching in the morning. I do my training. Then afterwards I go home, I have a nap and then I come back and I'm training people in the evening. And it's like, yeah, I'm making the good money and I'm making the same money I was, you know, two years ago um, and they're not even like trying to develop their business which is what they're working on all the time or they're working in all the time i should say you know and while they're having you know meaningful conversations and you know all the other stuff that you're like these are the things you need to be thinking of and there comes a point where you're kind of like, like what are you actually trying to get out of this you know like what would happen if like what where would your identity be if I don't know, again, like you fucking broke your leg or something, you know, and you can't train people and you can't go to the gym. It's like, who do you become then? You know, what are your hobbies outside of being in the gym? You know, and like, I always joke about it. It's like people that go to the gym are often the most fucking vitamin D deficient people because they never go out in nature. They literally stay inside all day and work. And then they go drive to a gym and go on under artificial lights and be like, oh yeah, cool, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to do my fucking training here, you know? And they never actually see the outdoors because they just don't think of that stuff. They don't engage in that stuff because it's like, oh, well, that's not the gym. I, I, that's, I wouldn't go out for a hike. I wouldn't go out for a walk. I'll go to some tanning beds though because I need to get that sick tan for my holiday, you know? So it's like, you get so dissociated from reality. Now, again, in certain points, it's like that's, you know, like we live in the northern hemisphere uh in the northern regions of it as well in ireland you know we're pretty fucking high up which we should be frozen in ice and um, but um so we don't really get sun so there are definitely times where you know you're just not going to see the sun you're gonna wake up go to work it's dark you're gonna go home it's dark you know so it's like 100 percent. you're not going to have access to the sun that's not what i'm complaining about what i'm saying is um people can get very dissociated from you know real life and end up not actually engaging in healthful practices just by virtue of you know not getting out in nature not getting fresh air not doing all those kind of things that you're like these are just objectively good things and and subjectively good but you, you can get so far down that rabbit hole where you don't actually like the person that you are you know like you don't have any hobbies you used to i don't know draw you used to read books you used to do whatever and and you just don't do that anymore because you're like, oh, like I have work to do or oh, I'll just do that or, you know, whatever. Oh, like I don't have any time in my day. And you look at their phone and there's six hours of Instagram on it. You're like, like they become the person that they didn't, they never wanted to become. And it takes an event or whatever to kind of snap them out of it. But oftentimes it can be hard then to get out of that rhythm, right? And so, yeah, I don't know. It's It's a hard one because like... You, it's a double-edged sword where you want to do all the things that are going to be helpful and get you the results. And you learn so much uh, good, positive habits from being regimented and being strict with your diet and being strict with your training and, you know, training hard and progressively and doing all those things. Right. But there is a point, a tipping point where it's like, you're just doing too much of it, not necessarily in terms of what your body can handle. Like you could, you're progressively overloading, you're getting stronger, you're building muscle, you're doing whatever. And um, what in terms of what is tipping over and detracting from the rest of your life, you know, like you never go out with your friends, you never, I don't know, see your children or whatever it is, you know, you're just, you're not actually engaging in living your life, you know? So I don't know how you actually solve that apart from just having 
a slightly more laid back approach to things, you know, and um, like there's going to be dietary slip ups. That's okay. We can still be on the plan of action in terms of a longer term plan of action. We can still be in, in a diet or a deficit over a longer period of time rather than being, you know, I have to hit my macros bang on. Um, like there's, there, it's, it's a hard one because there's no actual, like I can't just give a generic, this is how we solve this issue, you know? And really the, the point of this podcast is more so to get people thinking a little bit more about like, okay, what are my beliefs? What are my values? Like, why am I training? Like, yeah, okay. I want to lose weight, tone up, do whatever it is. But what's that actually achieving? And how is that actually detracting from the rest of my life? You know, is my training actually enhancing my life? You know, you see this as well, bodybuilders, especially where they'll do a lot of training, but they effectively lose function in doing that training, you know, like they're not actually able to sleep properly because their, their traps are too big or their neck is too big or whatever, you know, um, or they're not actually able to engage in, you know, day-to-day -day activities that you would think like, oh, someone who's big, strong and fit would be able to do. Like, they're like, like, I remember listening to a bodybuilder before and they were like, oh no, I don't like help moving the sofa and stuff because they're like, oh, like get, get, a, get a mover to do it. They're like, that's not my job, you know? Or like the classic example is always like Lance Armstrong. He used to just not bring in the groceries from the car because he was like, no, my arms get too big and it's a negative for my sport, you know? So like when you say stuff like that, like obviously that sounds very like hyperbolic and you're like, oh, well, they're obviously the exceptions. But people are doing that every day with their life. They're like just average Joe or Jane that just wants to get in shape and build a bit of muscle. And they're like, Oh and Jesus, no, I didn't go to my uh, granny's funeral, you know, because I, I couldn't stay on track with the, the food, you know, there, I, I just didn't go, you know, like stuff like that. And you're like, what, like, what's going on, you know? And so, I don't know, I just want people to think about it, think about what they're actually doing, be a bit more uh, awake going into the whole conversation, the whole, you know, achieving results. Because again, I'm of a predilection where I definitely would be like, all right, no, everything's going to be regimented. This is the time I wake up. This is the time I go to sleep. At. I'll get this done by this time and we'll hit these exact macros and we'll do whatever. And, but I don't think that that leads to the best results longer term. Again, certain periods of your life that can be beneficial, but for the vast majority of people having a, a bit more leeway and flexibility in their, their, their program in their nutrition it actually leads to better outcomes overall you know yeah it, it is fundamentally like a, a feed forward cycle of the values that you embody because if you think about again coming back to that that idea that all, all your values have basically converged on i want to build muscle i want to lose fat i want to have better body composition then if you if, if you if that's literally the, the the thing that you hold as your ideal like that's your ideal then all of your all of your actions then are measured as it relates to that. So if you're thinking about those examples, like like Patty discussed there, mm -hmm. of carrying in the shopping or moving the sofa or whatever, or like going to concerts, anything, you're 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 always weighing those things up uh, in, in relation to that ideal that you've held there in, in saying, uh, does this uh, contribute to uh, my goal of improving my body composition? Or does it potentially take away from it? And then that literally guides all your decision making. And that is like the way a lot of people live. And if you're a competitive bodybuilder, that's fine. But if you listen to competitive bodybuilders who have retired, like listen to the way, the way that they talk about their lives. Like it's not always positive. Like they'll say, you know, I was able to do this. I was a lone wolf. Uh, I was able to ignore family and friends, et cetera, and just do nothing that didn't contribute to my, my bodybuilding goals. Um, but they don't, it's not, it's not necessarily positive when you actually think about it. It's like, okay, yeah, that all sounds good. But again, it only sounds good if your ideal uh, that you hold up, that you value is like just bodybuilding, just looking better, just improving your body. And it also only is good when you're a winner because there's this yeah. whole selection bias where it's like, oh, what did this extreme winner do? And it's like, oh, they had this mentality. But the amount of people out there that are like, you are just never going to have this bodybuilding success. You're going to be you know, mediocre at best. Even if you did all the drugs, you did all the training, you did everything right. You just don't have the genetics for it like this other person does, you know? Um, and if you're going to measure yourself by what they've, they're doing and you're going to use that as a, a proxy, it's like, 
we're missing something here where they're actually like elite and you're just a, a normal person. It's like this, like th that's fine. Again, they're, they're winning stuff. They're making their money from this. They're doing whatever, but you are just an average Joe, you know? And that's not to say that you can't be successful or that you can't better yourself or that you can't have goals and whatever, but it's like, you, you can't compare yourself to that top tier and be like, Oh, this is all beneficial stuff. It's like, cause they can, they're, they're looking at that true rose tinted glasses because they won, but all the losers also did all that stuff and lost, you know? So do they have the same approach? No, probably not. Um, but we just don't interview them because they didn't win. Yeah. And I think you do have to think about it like that, that likelihood of there being something positive coming from it. So like, like you said, like there's very few winners, you know, they're cat, that, but that's, that's sports. Like if it's, even if it's bodybuilding where you've got individuals competing against each other or powerlifting or whatever, like there's only going to be one person that comes first in your weight class or whatever it happens to be. And like probability wise, like it's unlikely you're going to be a professional bodybuilder. You know, it's, it's unlikely, very unlikely that you're going to end up being making considerable amount of money out of this thing or making it something that actually contributes to lifelong, like stepwise progression. So I think you have to, you have to think about that likelihood for a positive outcome, whether it's bodybuilding or, or anything else we're talking about. Um, it could be your career. Like, so for example, if you were to think about the likelihood of a positive, positive outcome of you dedicating yourself uh, as a as a student, for example, it's like, well, yeah, that's probably a good thing because you know, there like a hundred students can all get uh, one one degrees if they if if they get the grades, you know, as long as they're not being scum with a bell curve. <laughs> but you know, you, like you 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 know that like if I work harder as a student, I put more time into studying, and I live in accordance with what is required to do that. Um, then yet yeah, you get better grades and maybe that's really important depending on your field. Like, so for example, if you're saying there's a, a I'm, I'm going to get into this graduate program as an engineer and they only take on students who've gotten first class honors degrees, then like you can very clearly tell that, okay, I, if I hold up this ideal of being a better student, being a diligent student with discipline that I'm going to have a pretty high chance of getting onto this graduate program, which is then going to give me the opportunity to, again, move, move on this kind of stepwise progression of excelling in life in my career, which is going to make up like a lot of my life. Um, so like there's, there's very clear reasons there to say, oh yeah, no, don't, don't just turn around and say, oh yeah, you know, I, I have been studying to get on this graduate program, but I listened to Patty and Gary and they said I should go on more hikes and, you know, do, do less studying. Like, that's not the thing. The, the, the point is that for that, let's say, two-year period of life where you really need to study a, a bit harder in your final two years of college, it actually makes sense to sacrifice more things because you know that you're getting opportunities that then carry you forward, you know, and you're getting into a new culture that will then reinforce other behaviors, etc. So, it's not like we're Jesus. The two of us are definitely not making the case for not living a disciplined, <laughs> disciplined lifestyle or doing things that make your life better. Absolutely not. What we are making a case for is asking yourself what actually makes my life better and what, like, what do, what do I value fundamentally? And I think like an action point here, because like fundamentally, like we're, we're basically just discussing theory and saying, oh yeah, go ask yourself. Like, but an actual action point. That you can that you can take here is to set goals in your life that are completely unrelated to training if that means getting involved in something new so be it i, I guarantee you it will diversify your perspective on life like one example of that is and i'm not suggesting you do this but the fact that i um and i'm in a circle of let's say all right i if i go on my instagram or whatever I'll have a lot of messages from personal trainers and I follow personal trainers and stuff like that. And I discuss with things with those people regularly. So I'm exposed to all their values. I'm exposed to what they do. I see the way they live their lives and I see what they care about. But then if I go into college, I'm being exposed to doctors that, that are teaching me and you know, all medical students uh, that are my peers. And I see their values and I see the way they live their lives. And I see why they set their lives up in such a way that contributes to their ideal. And then if you go to jujitsu training, again, a whole new uh, circle of people with different values, different things they care about and lives that are organized in, in accordance with those values. And as a result of all of that, and obviously your family and friends too, you begin to see that, okay, it seems like all of these people 
are living good lives. You know, there's some people who aren't on the path. There's some people who are more on the path and they care about lots of different things. And you'll begin to realize, or you might begin to realize that some of the values that you have been holding close to you are just the result of basically positive reinforcement. You're being reinforced uh, to hold these values tighter because people reward you for doing it. Like, so for example, if you're posting physique photos on Instagram and everyone's like, oh, you look good. All that dedication is paying off, et cetera. Like that's a good thing. But if it's, re- if it's just reinforcing those things and you're never coming back to question, uh, that's maybe not so good. Whereas if you're posting physique photos and you're going to, to college to study I don't know, engineering or medicine or whatever it happens to be, nobody cares and no one rewards you for that. And that was something that was actually really valuable for me because you begin to realize that, oh, you know, there's all this training stuff. People don't actually care. Nobody cares. Like someone might say, oh yeah, it looks, looks like you're in good shape. You go gym, do you? And you're like, like that's so insulting as well when, when you're just, when you've, de- when you're dedicating your whole life to it and someone's like, oh, do you, do you go to the gym or even better? Or do you exercise? It's like, what do you mean do I exercise? <laughs> you know, this is my whole life. <laughs> but the reality is that like people, people don't care. Other people don't care. And that's not to say you should put other people's opinions at the center of your, uh, your value judgments, but it should, it should make you realize that there's a lot. There's a lot to life. There are a lot of different ways of living a good life. You can respect that. You can choose your own. And if you go through that process and end up at, no, I want to dedicate my whole life to just building muscle and looking better, that's totally fine. You've done that honestly. There might be trade-offs, but you have done it honestly. So, so I think that is, one, that is one action point. And examples of things you could do would be maybe join, I don't know, an, an evening art class, you know, it could be something as simple as that. It could be, you make, you make it your hobby, uh, with some of your friends that you, uh, follow Instagram pages that, uh, post rare flowers or rare plants, and then you share them around to each other and you're like, Oh, have you seen this, uh, species of flower or whatever it is, you know, just, just, just something that is, uh, different to the grind of bodybuilding. And we're saying bodybuilding, but like, we don't mean competitive bodybuilding. I mean like anyone who's just training for the sake of just training pretty much. Yeah, I actually don't have anything to really add to the conversation. Like I think we covered everything that we, we want to cover. Um, yep. Basically health and fitness should enhance your life. So if it's becoming your life and you're not getting paid for it, you really need to be thinking like bank over bench, right? So that's, that's one thing, but also it's like, you need to be thinking like, what are these other life things that I'm missing out on? And by virtue of just being the person that all I think about is health and fitness stuff. Like I don't eat these different foods. I don't go outside of my macros or my calories or whatever. And like, or your, your training very regimented. You go six days per week. You're in there at 6 a.m. You're chugging away and you're doing whatever. You're like, oh, I couldn't have a single day where I didn't get my 10,000 steps. You know, like, yes, all of those things have a place and they have a time. And they definitely teach you beneficial, positive habits, whatever. However, you have to, be accept, you have to accept the trade-offs of that. And you have to set your plan up in accordance with who you want to become as a person and how you want to live your life, you know? And that could mean you're going to do 16 weeks of very intensive. Uh, I'm very regimented. I'm going to get to, I don't know the, the six pack that I want. And then the rest of my life, I'm going to work on bringing in more, you know, flexibility, more, uh, you know, the other stuff that I actually care about, but I'm just like, this is the, the goal right now. And uh, once I achieve it, I'm just going to try to maintain as much of that as I can going forward, you know? And so again, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing forever. You know, there are periods of time where, you know, that might be beneficial, you know, like Gary coming up to exams, for example, he's going to be spending more time studying and doing stuff like that, that, you know, might mean that he can't train or he can't, you know, do as much triage work or that he can't, you know, read or he can't do all the stuff that he wants to do and he enjoys doing. Um, but again, it's like, okay, this is the focus time period. This is when I have to do this other stuff, you know, during like, for example, summer, Gary wasn't doing college work, you know? So there are time periods in your life where, you know, you push for certain things and you pull back on other things, you know, you can still do that. However, 
you just need to keep your actual values and who you want to become at the forefront of your decision making process or tree or whatever you want to call it. Yep. I'm I'm on board with that. And what I would the only final thing I would say is that it's very easy to be it's easy and understandable that you would be resistant to this message if you're someone who needs it the most. <laughs> and that's, that's like, that's me thinking back to like 19 year old Gary or something like if I had listened to a podcast like this, the, because the thing is like people, people even said to me, you know, when I was first getting into the gym and getting real obsessive with it, um, that, you know, Oh, you need to, you need to just live your life more. You know, you need, you need, you need to relax. You need to chill out. And at the time you're just like, don't fuck those people, man. They don't get it. They're, they don't understand my grind, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, and that, 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 is, that is true to some extent because if someone is not in your world, they don't understand why you live in the way that you live. Um, but you, it, it's understandable that you'd be resistant to this message. But I would encourage you to you know, at least consider it, at least think about it and be aware of examples where it really does come into play. Um, because I think... I think when you do expose yourself to more of the real world, let's say, I think it does, it does definitely become more apparent. I think one of the difficult things is that, as you said, a lot of people who are of this mindset and approach training in this way, they end up on the path to becoming personal trainers and also making this whole training thing their career. And the life expectancy of a personal trainer in terms of their career, not their actual life expectancy, is quite short. Okay. Um, it is quite short. Lots of personal trainers, uh, quit per personal training. Lots of people move on to other careers. Lots of people end up realizing that it wasn't the satisfying job they thought it would be because they enjoyed training so much themselves. They enjoyed committing their whole life to it. And then you get into personal training and suddenly it's literally all you have the option to think about. And now you're thinking about it as it relates to everyone else. And sure, you're passing on positive things, but don't definitely don't assume that just because this is something that you value, that it's also going to be a worthwhile career. Because I would say that there's actually probably a, a, a very significant benefit for someone like this to actually have a career that's totally unrelated to training. Because it is one of those it is one of those things that will come back and hit you in the face and say, "Hey, this is real life." Uh, here are examples of things other people value. Here's something else that could give you potential purpose and meaning and a, you know, a, a ladder to climb. And, and I think that can, that can give you those, those moments of, uh, of waking up, I suppose, uh, from the, the obsessive approach, approach to training. But again, you know, if there are plenty of people I know, I know lots of people who are, you know, big into, big into training, obsessed with the process of bodybuilding and also work in the field as personal trainers and, they love their lives and that's absolutely fine. You know, it's not to say that that's always going to be the case, but we still have to accept that certain people, yeah, you should actually do that. So I'm definitely not saying that, that, that you shouldn't. And I mean, like, it would be hypocritical for me to say that. I'm someone who was obsessed with training. I'm someone who got into personal training. To be honest, even getting into physio and, and medicine, they were both like spin-offs of being obsessed with training, like, because that led to me being, you know, obsessed with health and wanting to, to pursue these different things. So, so yeah, it would be hypocritical of me to say, oh, you should go into business or engineering or something to get away from training. Um, but yeah, again, just come back, question yourself, question all of your decisions, ask yourself what your values are, repeat that over time. Um, it's likely to change. The re reality is that your 21 year old self with no kids in college, you know, as a lone wolf is going to have very different, a very different perspective to your 35 year old self with uh, 13 children. Um, so yeah, you just have to, you have to remember that, that, that things do change and you have to come back and, and question your values as you go. hundred percent. And just on that personal training note as well. Um, the, the worst thing about this entire thought process is that people get into personal training because again, they enjoy training themselves, but ultimately then again, three, four years down the line, they're like, Oh yeah. Like I just actually sick and tired of thinking of everyone else's training on top of then doing my own training and yeah. I'm just going to get out of the field. And all of a sudden they don't enjoy training anymore and they stop training and they stop looking after their health and fitness stuff because they're just like, Oh, look, I, I'm, I'm burnt out effectively yeah. you know? and I don't think that's a, a good thing either in the short term for that individual or in the long term for you know humans and um, so 
heed the advice and just be like, right, like, what are my actual values? What am I trying to achieve in my life? Like, we're bagging on personal trainers here a little bit, but that's obviously because, first of all, that's our field. Um, but second of all, I, I know a lot of personal trainers listen to this, you know? Um, but anyway, guy, Gary, um, where can people find more information about us? What are our services? And if they are personal trainers, you can see this, they're all listening now. Um, what would be beneficial for them? Well, 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 we've got the Coach's Corner, which is a, an education platform designed for personal trainers specifically. Obviously, if you're an interested trainee, you're welcome to join. If you're a nurse or an engineer, you're welcome to join. We don't care. You know, if, you're, if you want to get uh, better information, then that is a good place to go. So basically, the Coach's Corner is designed to support personal trainers first and foremost. So while there is useful information in there from the theoretical perspective so if you want to learn anatomy for example or nutrition theory you can learn it in the coach's corner from us um but we also have a lot of practical stuff and plan to make more practical stuff i suppose relevant to this conversation to some degree um we will actually have resources i've got some 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 videos planned on things like time management for personal trainers uh things like resource management so for example if you're if you're learning if you're going learning and you're, even if you're watching it i guess it's kind of a meta topic if you're if you're going learning from the coach's corner how do you get the most from that you know what are you going to use to take notes you know how do you come back to this where are you going to save it for the future because there are lots of things that i do and we do to actually manage our own learning processes and stuff like that and manage our time and and manage our coaching process and we basically want to pass that on to people and pass on things that even things we mightn't have used but that could potentially be useful so so yeah if you want to be a better personal trainer then I think the coach's corner could potentially uh, be of use. Uh, we're basically trying to move beyond just uh, coaching people ourselves and trying to move into trying to pass on education things. You know, we've obviously spent quite a bit of time and we'll continue to spend a quite a bit of time educating ourselves in things related to the health sciences, for example. Uh, lots of personal trainers will not have the time to do that. So what we want to do is try and bring the relevant information uh, to those personal trainers who are actually on the floor for 12 hours a day training people, because uh, it is understandable that, that coming back and, and educating yourself with no path, you know, you know no process uh, can be quite difficult. So, so yeah, if you're interested in that, you can sign up below. Um, and that's a, that's a member site, by the way, and also it comes with a Facebook support group. So you do have... Uh, you do have some, some input in terms of the content that we do produce. So for example, if you present us with case studies and specific questions and stuff that will inform the content that we then produce. So uh, you can, you can kind of tailor it to, to what you want to learn about as well. Uh, so other than that, we do have online coaching spaces av available as well. So if you're interested in being coached by us and working towards your own goals, maybe you're someone who is on this path of being obsessed with training and you want to diversify your goals and work with someone to help you on that on that path that that's something we can help with so if you're interested in online coaching generally you can sign up and work with us um and other than that there are main services but we do also have a, a newsletter that we would recommend you sign up to uh, that goes out every week and gives you recommended resources uh, from around the internet so again if you're one of those people who you want to keep up with with educational stuff but you don't know uh, where to go there's too much of it we do give you some recommended resources that isn't related to our own content that could be useful um, and we also give you a kind of a weekly roundup of things we might have produced and maybe what was in the coach's corner and an exclusive post generally goes along with that in the newsletter. So again, it's more content that you could consume. Um, and other than that, we do have social media. So Instagram, Facebook, uh, the YouTube and the podcast, of course. So subscribe to all those. Give us a rating and review if you would be so kind on the podcast. And that would really help us out. And, and we also have a Facebook group, the Triage Method community, if you're interested in coming closer to our community involved yes i have nothing else to say um it's too easy as per usual too easy. 